What is going on guys? My name is D-Free. Welcome back to another Dragon Ball Super episode review. We're going to talk about episode 108, so make sure that you buckle up. Hope you guys enjoy it. Subscribe if you're new uh, for more interesting intros like that. Anyways, let's talk about it. So the episode is really good. I don't have a whole lot of gripes with it. I thought it was really well executed. And it's weird that like the ones that have Frieza seem to be the ones that are the best you know, executed episodes of Dragon Ball Super. In my opinion, a lot of them incorporate Frieza. I think it's just because his motivations are very interesting and the character is interesting in this arc in particular. Specifically, uh, he has a really cool role in this. So let's go ahead and talk about it. Now, the episode begins with Goku Ribrian. I don't know how I feel about Ribrian. It's like... I don't really too much care for the whole magical girl genre, you know, so it never really appealed to me. There are some guys I know that do like it, et cetera, et cetera, Sailor Moon and stuff. So it never really appealed to me. So this is just kind of like a massive turnoff in the show for me. It's kind of, it kind of feels misplaced, right? I do understand that they want to establish that, you know, different universes are managed differently, but like still, it just feels misplaced to me. So every episode that she's in is just like, eh. But in the trailer from the next episode, it seems like maybe she won't be there after the next episode, or at least we won't see her for a while because we get into some more epic stuff. So I can kind of let it slide. But it's like, Ribrian, goodbye. Okay, we already saw you fighting a couple of times. They already gave you a dedicated episode. I don't care about you anymore. That's just my opinion, personally. I don't really care about her anymore. So uh, thankfully, we're moving on from that. And then the episode does a good job of moving on from it itself this week, right? Because immediately after that, we cut over to Gohan. And Gohan is clearly fatigued. Now, I don't really like this. Uh, it could be just that Gohan is rusty. You know, I don't really like that he's super fatigued like that uh, because I feel like Goku and Vegeta should be a lot more fatigued because they've been in and out of more battles. They've been in and out of Super Saiyan Blue at this point. But it seems like Gohan has probably sustained more damage, which once again could be attributed to him being rusty. Of course, he was in that situation with the sniper and stuff, but Piccolo took most of the damage from that. Piccolo specifically has had a stamina drain because he had to regenerate and stuff. But Gohan just seems like he's really messed up, right? And Jimmy shows up and he's like, hey, you then they spar for a little bit and he's like hey you have a lot of potential as a fighter and this of course is a running gag at this point with gohan uh it's a theme it's a trope whatever you want to call it that this character specifically has a lot of latent potential no matter how much you unlock his potential it seems to be this immeasurable thing that continually changes and that's not how it was established in super uh i did a video talking about it way back how Potential is like a predetermined thing. It's your capacity be, to be uh, good at something. Maybe some of you guys have been subscribed for a while would know about that video, like Kaguya no Kaze, for example. A uh, shout out to that guy. Um, but in Super, you know, they're always like, hey, we have a whole bunch of potential. We have a whole bunch of potential. Trunks, Gohan, Goku, Vegeta still haven't reached their potential. It's like, you know, the more they train, and I, I feel like it has something to do with them being Saiyans, Zenkais, etc. You know, they're, that wall that would be potential just constantly gets moved and moved and moved. They never really cap out. Even though Vegeta said ages ago that they were almost close to capping out, but I digress. Anyways, he's like, hey, you have a lot of potential. I will show you my moves if I ever see you again. And it's like, well, awesome. Why didn't Goku show him how to do the instant transmission? Why didn't Goku show anybody how to do anything ever? Okay. Yeah. Aside from like Super Saiyan 3 with Goten and Trunks because the plot demanded it, Goku never really showed anybody anything. So that was interesting. <laughs> uh, but I did like seeing Jameez, but they never really explained because he gets utterly eliminated in this episode. They never explained like how this guy got to that universe because we know that Universe 7 innately has you know, a yard rat world where there are yard rats because Goku went there and they're the ones that trained him and taught him the instant transmission and stuff on his way back from planet Namek when Frieza, Mecha Frieza showed up and all that stuff. So we know that that's a thing, right? And then of course they have to have one in universe six. It only makes sense unless it was destroyed like earth was That's a different story, but it makes sense for them to have one in universe six because it is a parallel world. So our universe, excuse me. So they have to have one, but how does universe what two have a yard ride? Did he like geek them? Danny has said for a while, maybe he defected to this universe and that would make sense, right? Maybe, maybe he did that. Maybe they recruited him personally. I don't know, but they didn't explain it. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that in the future they do. But I will say, like I said in the beginning of the review, Frieza was a complete savage. He was awesome in this episode. I really love Frieza, even though I don't particularly like the character because they do a good job of making it hard to like him, in my opinion. But it's like they make it hard to like 
like him, but you still like him. It's a really weird kind of dichotomy with Frieza that I have personally. Of course, Gohan's my favorite character, and of course, Krillin is one of them too because, you know, Krillin it. Um, but still, I think Frieza was executed really well. Him showing up and doing the classic, oh, the classic to Super, oh, my fingers slipped, you know, type of thing in the middle of the fight, saying, I'm not going to intervene, I'm not going to intervene. And we already knew that he had a plan, right? And I don't know if I like this part in particular because at this point, the commentators, you know, the Beerus, the Whis, Master Roshi, Ten Shinhan, Krillin, they're on the sideline acting as sort of like de facto narrators. They're there to explain to you what is happening. Now, my only issue with that, because it's been great, like I love when Super does stuff like that because so much stuff goes unexplained, unsaid in this series. You know, like for example, can somebody tell me what Rage is? Super Saiyan Rage? Oh, it's a, a form you rage into. What, 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 is, what is it really? Like, what are the properties of it? Is it blue? Is it super? No, you can't because it never really was explained, right? So only thing we have is, is headcanon theories. There's no actual concrete answer. So that being said, I love when they do stuff like this because so much has gone unexplained. But what I didn't like about this is that they were like, okay, well, Frieza wants to do this. Frieza wants to wish this. He basically probably, they're speculating, he probably wants to eliminate you know, a god of destruction or something like that that's in his way, which is a really interesting uh, concept, but it's like, oh, you guys figured all this out in the matter of, like, a minute? Seconds? All right. <laughs> Simply because he showed up and didn't exactly help Gohan at first, because I'm pretty sure, even if, even if I'm wrong, it doesn't really matter if I'm misremembering, but I'm pretty sure that they, you know, concocted that theory before Frost even showed up, right? Uh, so even if, even like I said, even if Frost was already there, it doesn't change what I said. So either way, it's just like weird to me. I like that they did it, but it's it kind of came off as forced in my opinion. Uh, that could have waited a couple more episodes. And like I said, Frost shows up, you know, he's like, oh, senpai, show me this, show me that. And Freeze is like, oh, you know about this? You can use full power. You can use uh, gold if you train, which actually was pretty cool, like parallel to Goku, uh, not a Goku, excuse me, Kaba and Vegeta from the previous time. was like, oh, you can reach this level of power too, talking about Super Saiyan Blue if you train up. So I thought that was interesting. Excuse me, uh, from Universe 6 to Universe 7. So when it came to that, it seemed like at that point, because Gohan and Frieza did the sparring thing, which I was like, oh, snap. Are they really going to get into this? I really wanted to see that, though. But then I would have been so mad because I know Gohan would have lost, right? Because I know Gohan would have lost simply because they already had a built-in crutch for Gohan to lose. Even if Gohan isn't as strong as Frieza, because Gohan is a lot more closer to Android 17. And Frieza is kind of on that same level as Vegeta, as like the second strongest character in the universe. Regardless of how you rank it, they've said, the writers have said Frieza's second strongest or third strongest, and then Gohan is relative to Android 17 in that next slot behind Goku, Vegeta, and Frieza. So of course, Gohan would have lost probably anyway, but, you know, Gohan had a built-in crutch for being weakened, right? He was, like I said, fatigued. He was already tired been into so many executive or consecutive fights, etc. So they had the built-in crush. Even though he went ultimate, which is really cool too, but they kind of flip all that on its head. And turns out that Frieza was double crossing his double cross. So he was actually acting against Frost the entire time. So Gohan was fortunate enough to pick up on the fact that Frieza was not really gonna go along with Frost simply because he could tell that the punch wasn't serious. Now, the one problem, okay, the one problem I don't like with this, the one problem I have with this is, answer me this, why didn't Frieza tell his universe about this plan to double-cross Frost? Why didn't he do that, right? Why didn't he actually do that? The episode says something interesting after that, too, where it's like, well, Krillin basically picks up, hey, I get the feeling that if if Gohan didn't pick up on this, I get the feeling that if Gohan didn't pick up on this, then Frieza would have basically went through with it. So it's like if Gohan didn't notice that Frieza wasn't fighting seriously, then Frieza would have actually double-crossed Universe 7. But he decided not to on a whim because Gohan picks up. That doesn't make any sense, right? Either he had a plan and he was going to act it out or he didn't or he had a plan and he changed his mind. So it seems like it's he had a plan and he changed his mind, but I don't like the reasoning for it. I think that's dumb. He just he picked up on it. It could have been because Gohan wound up playing along. It could have been, hey, 
uh, hey, Gohan, son Gohan sign, like he calls him, I'm going to go ahead and do this, and we're going to be here. Let's go ahead and you and I act it out this way, and I'm going to get him off guard, and I'm going to eliminate him. Talking about Frost. That could have happened. He could have told Beerus, and everybody's sitting there wondering. And I don't know if that's to protect the audience from, like, not for, for like not knowing what's going on. Maybe they didn't want the characters to know for that reason because the audience didn't know. Like I said, they're kind of like a pseudo audience. The characters on the sideline, they're us, right? So I don't know, man. I, it, it's weird. It's really weird. I don't know if I like that. It's just it's a it's a weird minor minor nitpick. It doesn't really hurt the episode. I still thought it was a really really good episode, but by far the most impactful part of the episode when Frieza eliminates Frost. Frost winds up getting Hakkaid by. Not literally Hakkai, but he got knowed by um, Zeno. So he's like, oh, you called me an amateur? Oh, man, watch this. I'm going to come after you. I'm going to get you. Because Frieza starts mad trash talking him with that sly tone, you know, like he does what Frieza do. And he's about to shoot a key blast at him. And Zeno's like, no. And he's eliminated, gone, erased. No more Frost. Dead. Done. KO. No more Frost. Wow. Zeno was like, yeah, no attacking from outside of the ring. And if you do it again, we're going to eliminate your entire universe. Wow. That was, I mean, it makes sense, right? But like, wow, I didn't expect them to just, damn, at the, at the drop of a hat, bye. So that was interesting. But hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, went a lot longer than I thought it would. Normally these are about eight minutes. So sorry it's a little longer. Thank you for uh, watching. If you made it to this point, comment hashtag curl in it. Make sure you leave a like. We want to hit that like goal of 400 likes. Subscribe if you're new, and I will catch you guys in the next review.